Hello everyone. Today we have Dennis from Sarnia and he's going to tell us his conversion story. So let's welcome Dennis on Zoom and talk to him today. Hello Dennis, how are you? Yeah, wonderful, thank you. Now I'm happy that you're willing to share your testimony. But before we get into that, do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself, about your family background? Yeah, my name's Dennis Lavalley. I was born uh, into a Catholic home and my parents were considered devout Catholics meaning they practice their religion faithfully. They would attend mass on Sunday, and they would also attend a benediction service on, the, on Sunday evenings. I was baptized uh, as an infant by sprinkling, and the understanding of the church was that I had uh, now become uh, born again and uh, a member uh, of the church. We would kneel down as a family and we would say the rosary together after supper. And it is one of the earliest memories that I have as our uh, family get together in doing that as a young child. My parents saw to it that I attended a Roman Catholic school and we were taught some very valuable uh, things. Number one, that the Bible was the word of God. And we were taught that the Lord Jesus Christ had died on the cross for sinners. We were taught the Ten Commandments, and this enhanced our knowledge and understanding that we were sinful. Yet, knowing these things, I had a very casual appreciation of sin and what it was, and we were never uh, exposed to the truth that if we were to die, uh, we would uh, may not be in heaven, but we could possibly be in hell. So eternal realities were never impressed upon us in this way. And so consequently, I went through life recognizing that there were sins in my life, but never understanding the importance of sin. And uh, I remember as a 13-year-old boy with some of my friends uh, being brought down to the church for confession, and the confessional had a light on it, to let you know that there was someone in the confessional telling the priest their sins. And we would watch, we would kind of time how long the light was on, and then we would laugh after if they were in there for a long time, saying, oh, this is a really sinful person. But yet, personal sins didn't bother me all that much. As a matter of fact, by the time 13 years old had gone around, I was actually enjoying some of the pleasures of sin and looking forward to doing more of it. And so, though I was, I might look religious externally, people would say, oh, he goes to church, he is perhaps a Christian, yet my life and my heart did not reflect these truths. And I really was, was ignorant of what the Bible taught about salvation, because that was never taught to me. When was the first time that you realized that what Bible says applies to you and you need to take that seriously? And how did you come across the gospel? I was working in Toronto in my 20s. And I encountered a group of people, uh, co-employees, who began talking about the book of Revelation in the Bible. Now, these men spoke about the, the book of Revelation and they talked about the, the judgments that were in it, and one of them gave me a Bible. I was interested in engaging in, in spiritual discussions, but I was kind of stuck with the understanding that Catholics were the only right way and everybody else was wrong. And so I always approached it from that view. And uh, when this person gave me the Bible, and they talked knowledgeably more about it than I knew. Um, I, I found it interesting, so I received the Bible from them. And uh, one night when I was drunk, I read the book of Revelation. And I remember thinking to myself, uh, as I considered the judgments that were, were told, I thought, wow, this is, this is terrible. And I just basically took the Bible and just threw it on a shelf someplace and, and just continued on in the vein that I had been going all along, but still open to 
uh, discussions or to reading about things. And uh, I came to a point sometimes where I began to listen to gospel messages being presented on the television. But if it got a little too close where the conscience got stirred up, um, I would just turn the channel. And, uh, but I really didn't know what was being communicated to me. I came to a point in my life where I thought I should bring my children back to church. And uh, a guy came to me one day, and he said to me, well, so nice to see you here with your family. You know, that's really good that you're coming here. But I thought inside my head, yeah, it's good that it's coming, but I'm really not participating. And, uh, but in order for me to participate, I was half going to have to go to confession. And the thought occurred to me, and the light is going to be on for a long time. I was in a, in a sincere mode at the time, wanting to sincere, be sincere about what the pursuit that I was on. And so I arranged for a time uh, when the priest would be there, and confessions were seven to nine, so I went as close to the end as I could <laughs> to make sure no one would see me. And uh, I began to go through the process we had been taught as children of examining our conscience. Well, when I got into the confessional, I began to tell the priest the things that I had done. And I, I, could, I could not put a number, honestly, on the number of times I lied. And I just, it had been so long, and I just couldn't remember. I had done so many things so many times. I just couldn't, and I said often. I just, I did, I lied often. I did this often. I did that often. So the priest said his prayer uh, over me, and which was supposed to be my forgiveness of sins that I received and a penance to do, which was to recite the prayer known by a lot of people, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, five times. And just a note on that, if God is an intelligent being, who can understand. Why did I have to say it five times? Didn't he hear me the first time? But really, I would, was just reciting. It was not heartfelt. It was just rote. It was just practice. And so I went out, and I began to say the prayers. But as I was saying them, the thought occurred to me, Oh, Dennis, you haven't told him everything. You need to go back in and tell him again. So I immediately left and went back into the confessional again. And the priest uh, said his prayer of absolution again and said to me, think about the wounds of the Lord Jesus. And so I went back out again. And as I was kneeling there, thinking about these things, for the first time in my life, my sins felt like a heavy burden on me that I cannot express. And I remember thinking to myself, you need to go back in there again. You have not told him everything. Because I was trying to be sincere. And I went back in, but at the time, confessions were over, and the priest was leaving, and he just held out his hands to me and kept me at a distance. And he said, son, be at peace. And so I left there with a burden of sins that I didn't know what to do with. And that was the first time in my life I realized just how many sins I was responsible for. And yet I still was not convicted in my heart to stop sinning. And if someone asked me and they said, Dennis, are you a sinner? I would have said, yes, I am, but so are you. I eventually ended up working in a place and alongside someone who knew the Lord Jesus as their Savior. And one day he and I were walking down the road, and he said to me, Dennis, if you died right now, where would your soul be? And Andy, it felt almost like what I imagined being shot with a gun would be like. That question hit me like a hammer. And God was really speaking through this person to me. And I remember thinking to myself, I'd, I'd like to go to heaven, but 
I don't know where I'm going. Surely my good would outweigh my bad. But I had to admit, I don't know where I would go if I died. And that began a, a, a deeper reading of the Bible. And I found out through reading the Word of God where I was going. If I had died, then I would have gone to hell. And I would have gone to hell deservedly. God deserved to punish me. And because God is righteous and he must do what is right. And I was wrong, and I was worthy of the punishment that God would give me because I had sinned against God. And so through, through reading and through help from my friend in spiritual discussions and listening to uh, messages, I began to get a deeper interest. And about six months prior to becoming a Christian, I even began to clean up my ways. But all those things didn't make me right with God. And it had gotten so a hold of me that I could hardly think about anything else. I was talking to my friends about it. I was asking what they thought. I was reading. But it wasn't until about six months later when I began to realize that, no, I, I'm not going to heaven uh, the way I am. And it came to a point where a friend invited me to come and hear the message of salvation, the gospel. And I said, no. I, we had always been taught that as Catholics that we were the only right way, and I was afraid to go into someone else's building. And it was a very foolish fear. Mm -hmm. no, one, no one accosted me. No one asked me for anything. They were very kind and just presented a, a message of the gospel to me. Where but was that again, Dennis? This was in a little gospel hall up on Lakeshore Road, on, uh, just uh, north of Forest, Ontario. And how old were you, if I may ask? I was uh, about uh, 30, 34 years old. So anyway, I, my friend, uh, we were happening to be in the neighborhood on this particular evening, and the gospel meetings were on, and I was, had been trying to figure out salvation. I hadn't been able to. And uh, so I asked my friend, are you going to that meeting up at Lakeshore tonight? He said, no, I can't go. And I thought, good, I'll go. Because if these people are, are crazy, then I can get out of there. I'm not stuck with somebody. <laughs> <laughs> and so when I went to the meeting, an old man, Hugh Kersey was his name, gave me a big hearty handshake and he pulled me right in the door and welcomed me into the hall. And, uh, Someone gave me a hymn book, and I sat down, and I listened to the two messages of the gospel. And uh, I don't know what they said so much, but I remember talking to one of the older preachers afterwards. He asked me some questions, and then he went to the pamphlet rack, and he gave me a little booklet that explains the way of salvation. And uh, they had gotten into the habit that in the evening after my wife and children went to bed, that I would pray and I would read the Bible. Well, this Sunday evening, I knelt down and in repentance, I told God that he would be right to put me in hell because I deserve to be in hell because of my sins, that he was right. So I really took sides with God against myself. And if he didn't save me, then I would be lost. And I, I asked him to save me. And I sat down in my chair with the booklet open. And I came to a verse that was quoted in the booklet in 1 John 5 and 10. And it said this, He that believeth not God hath made him a liar. And when I saw that verse, in my mind, this was stated, God can't lie. And if God can't lie, then I'm saved because I believe what he said about his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And at that moment, that burden of sins was lifted off of me. And I sensed a tremendous sense of relief that my sins were gone. 
And that was the 8th of February, 1987, on a Sunday evening around 11 o'clock. In the morning, the next day was my wife's birthday. And I remember saying to her, I said, happy birthday, dear. I think I got saved last night. <laughs> and uh, it, that was 33 years ago. And here I am today living in the enjoyment of the gift that God has given to me of eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord, the forgiveness of sins, adopted into the family of God and his blessing on my life for 33 years, all free because of what the Lord Jesus did for me on the cross of Calvary. Thank you, uh, Dennis, for sharing your testimony. And do you have anything to share for the people who are watching or maybe listening to your testimony right now? I would encourage you to seek the Lord while he may be found. The most important thing in life is not the number of friends we have, the amount of possessions we uh, have, the amount of wealth we have. The most important thing in life is to know the Lord Jesus Christ as a person's Savior. That gives you peace with God, assurance of a home in heaven. Thank you, uh, Dennis. And again, thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions, please use the comment section below. If you like the video, please share it with your friends and family members. If you are saved and if you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and as your Savior, then contact me and we can record your testimony and share it with the world. Thanks again for watching. Have a good day. Bye-bye.